Hello and welcome to this demonstration video showing how to use the new Quidos RDSAP 10 software. So the first step is once you've logged into IQ Energy as you normally would, you select Domestic Energy Assessment from the right hand side and then you click on the option for RDSAP 10 calculation. From here this will take you to an overview page which shows you all of the EPCs that you've previously created, whether or not they've been lodged or are still currently in progress. So in order to add a new EPC uh, you locate the add new button in the bottom left hand side of the page and you click on it. You can see that in a new tab this brings up a, um, the details for adding and creating a report. So the first step is that we need to select the country that the EPC is based in. So for this demonstration we're going to select England and then you need to enter in the postcode for the individual property that you have. Once you've entered in the postcode you then click lookup address and just below that will show you all of the addresses that are listed for that postcode that you've searched for. Select the address that you want and you can see that it gets imposed on the lines below. The final step before creating the EPC is to select the assessment date. So the easiest way to do this is by clicking on this little calendar button on the right hand side. That will bring up the calendar of dates. You select the one you want, it imposes it in the box. And then once you click create, we have now offic uh, officially created this EPC. So in terms of navigation, you can see that at the top of the page we have the address for the property that we're creating the EPC for. We've got the status and then we've got the ability to save. The, nav the main navigation tool for the Quidus RDSAP 10 software is this bar at the top. So you can see that at the start of our EPC there's a number of different tabs. Firstly starting with the general tab and then moving on to ventilation, main building, openings and so on. So there's a total of 10 tabs which get shown at the start. And we're going to work through those kind of in order and we're going to enter in all the information that we need to for the EPC. So you can see that next to each tab there's either a red exclamation mark or a orange exclamation mark indicating that there's still information to be entered in the instance of the red exclamation mark and the orange one indicating that we've yet to click on that tab. So all it is, is it's a case of simply going through and making the selections that you need. You can see that on this first general tab we have a number of what are called cards. So this first card is to do with previous report checks, the second card is to do with site notes, and then the third card is to do with property details. So you can see that within each card there's a series of data entries that need to be made. So for the previous reports checks we need to indicate whether or not the property has an existing EPC what the related party disclosure is. And you can see that once we make a selection for the individual data entry, the red box that surrounds that entry disappears. So you can see that these ones on the right hand side still have the red box around them, indicating that we need a data entry to be made, whereas these ones which we've made the entry for no longer have that. There's a site notes box where you can enter in any relevant information to this for the, um, for the individual EPC that you've completed. And then it's just a case of going through and entering in the data. So much of the data entries are very similar to those that were there for RDSAP 9.94. Um, so some of these should be very familiar to you. So for our little example here, we're just going to have enter in a fairly simple semi-detached house with a single extension. So we're going to say that it's suburban terrain, that the dimension measurements are internal. And then the main change in the new Quidos RDSAT 10 software compared to the old IQ Energy version is that no longer do you have a number of different tabs for aspects such as roof, walls, floors and roof rooms. Instead it's all rearranged on a building part basis. So you can see towards the top of the screen that from the outset I have the option for main building there and then in order to add a number of extensions to this particular EPC that's done on this initial page here. So you can see the extensions I get the option to add in anywhere between one and four and if I add in four extensions there you can see that at the top of the page I get an extra four tabs where I can enter in that data there. So for this demonstration we'll keep it relatively simple we'll just add in one extension you can see extension one is listed at the top of the page there and then it's just a case of going through and making the remainder of the selections that you need to for the um, for the data entries. So we'll say that there's five habitable rooms, all of which are heated. Here's a slight change in RDSAP 10. This is where you have to enter in for both the um, LED and the total CFL bulb count. If, you, if you've been unable to identify or distinguish between the two, you can click on this little button here and that will toggle between allowing you to entry, enter just the total low energy count or entering in both the LED and the CFL. 
Now I get to the bottom of the page, you can see that I've got no data entries left to be made. And then what previously was the red exclamation mark next to general is now a green tick. So I've entered in all of the information that I need to do for this initial general tab. And then it's just a case of working my way along and going to the next one. Each time you click between a tab, the software will automatically save, so you're not in danger of losing any information. If you do need to save whilst you're on a tab before clicking on to another one, then you can just click the save option in the right hand side and you get the little message at the bottom to say data save successfully. So the ventilation tab in RDSAP 10 is quite a lot different to what it was in 9.94. You can see that you've got all these extra options here for some of the additional ventilation sections that you need to be collecting information for. If you need to make these boxes active, they're all set to zero initially, then you just click on the little tick next to it and then you get the ability to then override that zero value there. Another new section in RDSAP 10 is for air pressure testing. So if, for example, you have had an air pressure test conducted, you simply click on that tick box and the boxes become active. Same for draft lobby, which is a new entry. If there's a draft lobby present in the property, you just click on that. Here's a good point just to let you know that you see, if you see this little camera icon next to the air pressure testing um, label there, this is where you can add and upload evidence for that specific section. So if you did have an air pressure test certificate, you can click on that little camera there and then you can add, then you can add the evidence there and it will automatically get labeled with the air pressure testing header. That's the same for all of the different cards. So you can see air permeability has got one and also mechanical ventilation. Mechanical ventilation is another big change in IDSAP 10. Obviously the majority of your properties will still be naturally ventilated, but if you do have a mechanical ventilation system, this is where you will now select it from the database. So very similar to how you would have selected a boiler in RDSAP 9.94, you click to select the product from the database and then you get the various options that you can choose from in there. If you select one and click save, that imports the details for that mechanical ventilation system. And then there's a number of other selections that you need to make, including the duct type, duct placement, and the insulation level. You can see, having made all my entries there, again, the ventilation tab now goes green. For the purposes of this property, which is relatively simple, I'll change that back to natural and then navigate onto the main building tab. So as previously discussed, this is where the main changes with the new editor compared to IQ Energy. You can see that for our main building, all of the different construction elements are contained within this one individual tab. And it's just a case of going through and making the selections as you would normally do. So we're going to say that this is a 1970s um, property. You select the number of floors that are present and then we can enter in our area, room height, heat loss perimeter and party wall length. If we need to copy that into the row below, we can do so by clicking on the copy button. And then by clicking on the save, we've now saved those dimensions into the software. There's still a little red exclamation mark coming up on this, and if we can see the error message there, it's because it's expecting a party wall, uh, party wall to be defined, which we're going to do when we come onto the wall construction. Before we move on to the walls, floor and roof, you can see that there are some additional tick boxes here below the dimensions tab. And this is where we select that whether we have either an alternative wall one or two, or whether we have a roof room. So you can toggle these on and off when you tick them, they become active and data entries are expected, but when you toggle them off, the software will assume that there's no entries to be made there. You can see for our roof rooms, we've got these additional selections that need to be made, including the type of roof room. And then once we make that selection, also the various entries for the gable wall types and lengths. For this simple scenario, we'll just detick that and we'll just enter in the information for the walls which will say has a wall thickness of 300 mil and is filled cavity, our solid floor and then our loft which will say is insulated as well. You can see that under the loft insulation we've got a number of additional data entries here for RDSAP 10 and that's the same with most of the insulation options for any of the kind of retrofitted insulation for floor, roof, roof rooms and walls. So we'll say that we've got 225 millimeters of insulation, which wasn't previously an entry. I'll just make sure I make that selection for the party wall construction, and you can see that dimensions has now turned green. And we've now got a green tick next to our main building tab as well. Having entered in an extension, we just need to go through and make sure that we also enter in the data for that. So I'll just quickly go through and put those pieces of information in. 
selecting again that it's a cavity wall and we'll say that we've got a flat roof on our extension and again you can see the different types of um, insulation thickness that are now available make sure we define the party wall again and we've got all the data in there for our extension so the main change to RDSAP 10 the software is that we are expected to enter in individual window openings for every EPC that we complete so the way to do this is once you click on the openings tab you're initially presented with a card for measured window openings which has no data entries made in order to add a new window you simply click on the add new option and you can see that this opens up a new screen where you then enter in the individual information for that first window that you're going to be putting in so we'll say that this window is draft proofed north facing and then it's double and installed between 2000 and 2002 we'll say that it's a UPVC frame and it's located within the main building and the external wall type one if I defined alternative walls for the main building this is where I'd be able to select them here then we enter in our height and our width of the window and if we click save we can see that we've now defined that window here when it comes to editing that window if we need to we can click on that little pencil icon on the right hand side and that will take us back in and show us the data entries we've already made for entering in the remainder of the windows we've got two options either we can click on the add new option and go through that process again entering in all of the information for each window the alternative is we can click on the copy facility next to that first window and you'll be able to see that that creates an exact replica of that first window second line down now if we need to go into that window and make some small changes because there's a slight difference between the size we can do so but this copy function just gives you a quicker way of making the changes needed and entering in all of the window information in a more time efficient manner you just need to make sure that you're always making the relevant changes so that any window that's slightly different to some of the others has that information reflected so we've entered in our four windows here that we'll say are present for our property and then the final section on the openings tab is just to define some of the draft proofing and external doors and whether or not those doors are draft proofed having entered in that information there we've got our green tick next to openings and we're now going to move on to the heating tab the heating tab is pretty much exactly the same as it was for RDSAP 9.94 in the new editor so the first selections to make are whether or not there's mains gas and secondary heating when I choose the secondary heating option you can see that this brings up a additional card at the bottom here um, for our secondary heating system and we've also got some additional options for meters that we need to be ticking so I select my electricity meter type and then I also need to be ticking whether or not the meters are smart meters and whether they're export capable so that's just simply a case of ticking the box there we now need to define how many main systems we have so we're just going to keep it nice and simple and say that we've got one mains gas boiler um, so we're going to select the fuel type as mains gas the data source as database and then one initial one additional step is to choose the heating type before you actually get sent to the database so we're going to say that we've got a gas or oil boiler and that we have got a Worcester Deglo 3BF so there's a number of different ways you can search if you can search by the brand the model the GC number so for example if I just started searching for that GC number you would see that I'd be able to find it as well and then if I do need to click on it and check that it's the correct version I can click on that details button and it will take me to that boiler within the, the PCDB having selected that boiler I can click save and then it shows the details there and then it's just a case of choosing the um, choosing the controls for that particular boiler so we're going to say that it's got programmer room thermostat and TRVs I'm going to say we've got a fan assisted flow connected to radiators and then we make our selections for pump age and flow temperature we defined that there was a secondary heating system present so we enter in the details for that and at this point we've entered in all of the information we need to for our heating system moving on to the water heating so we're kind of getting to the last stage now the last few tabs our water heating we're going to say that it's the same as main system one and then on the cylinder tab we have a number of new options in RDSAP 10 so we've got the original three options of choosing whether it's a normal medium or large cylinder but then we also have this option to enter in the exact cylinder volume if we know it 
So if we know, for example, that the cylinder volume is 175 litres, we can now enter that in there. And we still then make the selections for the insulation type, thickness, and whether there's a cylinder stat present. The final section on the water heating page is for the number of baths and showers in the dwelling, which is again is slightly different to how it was done in 9.94. You now select the total number of baths that you have in the dwelling, and then each shower gets entered individually. So if we've got a series of three showers, two of which are electric, we add each one in turn. And then the reason for doing it this way is that we can identify whether or not a wastewater heat recovery uh, system is connected and to which shower that is attributed. We can see we've got a green tick on water heating there. And then if we click on the next tab as renewables, we can see some of the extra options that have come in with RDSAT 10. We've got PV batteries here, where you can define how many PV batteries you might have present. Then we've also got the old options for PV system, but we've got the new we got the new option for small scale hydro generation and then also solar water heating. So you can see that you just type in a number here if you did have small scale hydro, which is unlikely, of course. Having got the green tick at the top of renewables, we're now going to move on just to the last couple of tabs. We've got recovery systems. So if you've got a flue gas or a wastewater heat recovery, they'll be entered here. And then on the final couple of tabs, we've got our results page and then also our evidence page, which would show all of the different photos and files we'd uploaded as we've gone through. So I can see actually looking back at main building, I didn't make a couple of entries for the floor on the main building. So if I make that selection now, I can see that that now turns red. So the final step is on the results tab. So you can see in order to run our calculation, we've got the option here on the left hand side for calculate. So all we simply do is click on that button and we can see that in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, it will say running calculation. Once the calculation is run through, we'll get a small message in the right hand side saying calculated successfully and then we're, we'll be able to see the energy efficiency rating and the environmental impact rating as well. Also on this page we've got the ability to um, look at the recommendations and also add addenda at the bottom if we so wish. In order to lodge the report, firstly we can preview the EPC to see what it looks like by clicking on the preview EPZ section and then we then need get the ability to lodge that report onto the register. So once you click lodge, that is then registered on the EPC register and that becomes an official EPC. In the top right hand corner of the screen, we've got options to, to download the SAP worksheet and also the XML. But at this stage, we've effectively completed our EPC and that brings us to the end of this demonstration video.